Soul Clinic, Wigan, 2019. At Grace Fountain Church, life transforming, destiny shaping, the power and the glory, with Bishop Jeremiah Gamado. He alone is here with his family. Amen. His family. So I will introduce him, and then he will introduce his wonderful, amazing, and glorious family. Amen. So without much I do, I welcome the servant of the Lord, Bishop Dr. Jeremiah Gomado. Thank you. God bless. Amen. Amen. It's good to see your wonderful faces. Amen. What do we say to our Papa? Amen. Amen. Bishop, do God bless you. And uh, God bless you for this privilege to stand in this holy podium. Amen. I believe that even if you are not anointed, if you find yourself behind this podium, the grace of God will come over you. Yes. Amen. Yes. Don't you believe that? Because this is a great man of God. And uh, ever since our paths crossed, my life has not been the same again. And I salute you. There is no better time than today to appreciate him before you. And uh, sometimes you don't know what you have. And uh, I want to encourage somebody that hold this treasure in high esteem. Amen. Don't you take him for granted. Hallelujah. And honor him. Pray for him. Stand with him and his family. Love them until there is no more love in you for them. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for him and his wife and his family this morning. Hallelujah. Like he said, I also came with my family. I came with my sister-in-law and uh, she's Mrs. Abledu. Amen, Laura Abledu. Amen. And, uh, and we are also here with her daughter, Elam Abledu, and her son, Clenam. Amen. Amen. And I also came with my son, who is also her son, Kelly. Amen. Amen. I also want to acknowledge old students and new students of Crossroad. Amen. It's good to see your faces. And uh, I see a known face also behind there. And uh, tell the person next to you he acknowledges you this morning. Amen. And tell the person you are the reason for our gathering this morning. Hallelujah. Because I believe this morning God is coming our way. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, David, I acknowledge you. Mandy, I see you at the back. And uh, I saw somebody. Amen. I acknowledge all of you. Where is Lee? Oh, you see, she was the one I said I saw somebody. Liz, I acknowledge you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we bow down our heads? Jesus, this morning we believe you passing by this way. And we believe that you are in this home. You've always been here. And many other things that you have done. This morning we have come. Asking you to add to it. For to you belong the kingdom. The power and the glory. Lord, we yield our spirits, our souls and our bodies to you. 
Take us on the journey of your word and minister life to us. Resuscitate us this morning. Empower us this morning. Enlighten us this morning. Let your glory, O oh God, shine forth this morning. Let your power, O oh God, redefine our beliefs this morning. Let your will be done this morning. Holy Spirit, glorify Jesus this morning. And have your way in the midst of the congregation. As you glorify Jesus, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. And we adore you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we please read Second Chronicles chapter 20? And I want to read verse 5 and 6. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 5 and 6. Then Jehoshaphat, this was when the enemy came up against Jehoshaphat and Israel. It says, then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord in front of the new courtyard and said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? Power and might are in your hand. There is no one able to take a stand against you. Hallelujah. It says there is no one able to do or take a stand against you. I want you to understand that if we're talking about the power, his power and glory, I want you to know that nobody can take a stand against God. God is determined to reveal his power and in his glory through you, through your life, through your family, through your church, and through everything that concerns you. And no one can take a stand against God and his anointed. That is the ground on which I want you to stand this morning. On Christ, the solid ground, we stand. All other grounds are sinking sand. And this morning, I invite you to stand on the solid ground this morning. That no one is able to take a stand against God and scripture tells me that we are hid in Christ who is in God so if no one can take a stand against God then know that you are hid in Christ who is in God so no devil can take a stand against you no power can take a stand against you no spirit can take a stand against you because God is for you and scripture says, if God be for us, who can be against us? So I want somebody to understand this morning that there are a lot more standing with you than you think. There is so much more in your favor than you see against you. Hallelujah. So I invite you to take a stand in Christ. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 22 Verse 29, it says, But Jesus replied to them, You are all wrong because you know neither the scriptures which teach the resurrection. I've been reading from the Amplified. Nor the power of God, for he is able to raise the dead. Hallelujah. In other words, Jesus is telling them here that if you know the scriptures, and you understand what the scriptures are about, and you understand what the power of God is, you will know that he is able to raise the dead. Hallelujah. 
This morning, I have come to announce to you that if we're talking about the power or his power and his glory, then know that he's able to raise the dead. No matter what looks dead around your life, he has enough power to raise the dead. And I want somebody to understand that in this month, as we go through the power and the glory celebration, as I call it, know that every dead thing is coming back to life. Every dead opportunity is coming back to life. Every dead vision is coming back to life. There is so much that is coming back into view. Somebody from the back end of the road is, or of the queue is coming into view. Hallelujah. Somebody from obscurity is coming into the limelight because of his power and his glory. Because his power and his glory is to make you into that which God has determined you to become. Hallelujah. Can I tell you a story? And before I tell you a story, I want you to put a caption over it. And the caption I want you to put over this story is, I am able to do this. I don't know what you are dealing with, but this is what the Lord wants me to tell you, that I am able to do this. I don't know what your life is faced with. I don't know what challenges you are going through. But in this season of his power and his glory, understand that he says, I am able to do this. Can you say with me, I am able to do this. Can you think about your situation? I want you to just imagine that which is before you. Maybe there is a mountain before you. Maybe in this month you've had the power and his glory. And you are expecting the supernatural hand of God to come your way. And I want you to zero into that issue, that challenge, that victory, whatever is before you. And I want you to just say to the situation that I am able to do this. Can you say it after me? I am able to do this. That is the voice of the Lord to you. And this voice commands his power and his glory, as you would see. Luke 8. Luke 8. Luke chapter 8. And I want to read from verse 41. And I'm reading from the amplified version. Luke chapter 8. From verse 41. This is a story you know so well. It says, And there came a man named Jairus, who had for a long time been a director of the synagogue. And, and falling at the feet of Jesus, he begged him to come to his house. I want you to have a pictorial view of this scripture. This is a pastor. In our day and age today, Jairus is a pastor. And he came to Jesus and falling at his feet and begging. This tells me how humble the man was. How many pastors will go in the open and kneel at the feet of another pastor and beg. Not just falling, but begging for everybody to realize that the man indeed is helpless. Are you understanding me? Amen. Amen. He portrayed his helplessness. And that is what I want you to have in view. Have a pictorial view of somebody you just see in a crowd somewhere, so helpless, and you wonder, why is he doing that? And he's so helpless, and he's begging another man. Because in his day, everybody saw Jesus as another man. Nobody saw him as Jesus. They knew his name, but to them, in that crowd, he was just another pastor. 
He was just another leader. And some even saw him as a rebellious leader. And they saw the head of their synagogue so helplessly begging, falling, and with a crowd around him. It takes a different spirit to be able to go to that length. And my question is, what spirit are you carrying? I want to question the spirit you are carrying. If you want to experience his power and his glory, my question to you this morning is, what spirit are you carrying? Amen. So let's go on. Verse 2. For he had an only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she was dying. As Jesus went, the people pressed together around him, almost suffocating him. And a woman who had suffered from a flow of blood for 12 years had spent all her living upon physicians and could not be healed by anyone, came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment. And immediately her flow of blood ceased. And Jesus said, who is it who touched me? When all were denying it, Peter and those who were with him said, Master, the multitudes surround you and press you on every side. But Jesus said, someone did touch me. For I perceived that healing power has gone forth from me. Is that in your Bible? He said, I perceive that healing, or in other words, power has gone forth from me. And when the woman saw that she had not escaped notice, she came up trembling. And falling down before him, she declared in the presence of all the people for what reason she had touched him and how she had been instantly cured. And he said to her, daughter, your faith, your confidence and trust in me has made you well. Go, enter into peace, untroubled, undisturbed, well-being. Verse 49, while he was still speaking, a man from the house of the director of the synagogue came and said to Jairus, your daughter is dead. Do not worry and trouble the teacher any further. But Jesus, on hearing this, answered him, do not be seized with alarm or struck with fear. Simply believe in me as able to do this, and she shall be made well. 51. And when he came to the house, he permitted no one to enter with him except Peter. I want you to count. I'll tell you something here. Peter and John and James and the girl's father and mother. Amen. 52. And all were weeping for the bewailing, for, for and bewailing her. But he said, do not weep, for she is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing full well, <clears throat> that she was dead. And grasping her hand, he called, saying, Child, arise from the sleep of death. 55. And her spirit returned from death, and she arose immediately, and he directed that she, she should be giving something to eat. And her parents were amazed, but he charged them to tell no one what had occurred. Hallelujah. Amen. Say with me, the power and the glory. Say with me, the power and the glory. Say with me, Lord, I want to see your power. 
And Lord, I want to see your glory. Beloved, if you can encounter his power, his glory will be revealed in you. And before I go into this story, I want you to understand that we are in the eighth month. And eight connotes a new beginning. And I want you to understand that something new can happen to you only if you can open up to his power to see his glory revealed in you. Hallelujah. This is the story of Jairus, who was a pastor. And how a pastor brought himself to this level with another pastor of the day is mind-blowing and it is humbling hallelujah and i want you to understand a few things in this story this story is about you and this story is about me bible says that jairus's daughter was ill and jairus went to jesus and begged jesus to come home to heal his sick daughter because he knew that his daughter or his daughter's life was ebbing away. He knew for, a sh for surety that her do his daughter was dying. So he went to Jesus with everything he could do to compel Jesus to come to his home. So Bible said Jesus decided to go with him. I'm sure you know also of the centurion who said, I am not worthy to come to your home. Lord, just speak the word and my child will be healed. But we meet the pastor and he never says to Jesus that only speak the word for my daughter will be healed. He said, Jesus, come with me. Come with me. Now, the meaning of his name brings it all out. The meaning of Jairus is the one whom he enlights. Amen. And I want you to understand that this is where we all connect in. And it becomes our story. Because you are somebody that God is out to enlighten. You are, Bible says we are a holy priesthood. If Jairus was a priest or a pastor, you are also. That is what his blood has made you. Because your real designated position is that you are a priest. You are a king. And you are a prophet. Amen. Bible says that we are priests and kings unto who? Our God. You are one that God has chosen to enlighten. You are one husband that God has chosen to enlighten. You are one worker that God has chosen to enlighten. You are one wife that God has chosen to enlighten. Amen. You are one pastor that he has chosen to do what? To enlighten like Jairus. And what you need to do is to engage him. If you want to see his power and you want to see his glory, it is only available if you can engage him. If you can set everything aside and zoom in to engaging him. Hallelujah. Amen. Is somebody with me this morning? So Jairus engaged him. And listen, if you can engage him to that level, he would take a walk with you. Because this whole journey is about walking <clears throat> with Christ. So Jairus started a walk with Christ. Beloved, listen, God already initiated it, but he needs your will to be involved. Amen. Amen. I've come to tell somebody this morning that your will is needed. You want the power, you want to see the glory, you want everything that goes with the calling, everything that goes with the life, but you are not ready to be willing. It says only if you will be willing, you will eat and taste of the good of the land. Hallelujah. 
Is somebody with me this morning? Amen. Amen. So Jairus began a walk with God or with Christ. And I want you to know that this is the walk of every believer. We are all walking with Christ. And your walk with him is in two parts. And that is what I want to share with you. So they began the walk and the walk was towards Jairus' home. You know, all this thing is about your destiny. All this journey with Christ is about your destiny. It is about where he's taking you to. It is about what he wants to make out of you. And just like Jairus began or started his walk with Jesus to his home, he had no idea, you see, that there was going to, become, there was going to come their way a woman. I've put here, he started a walk with Jesus to his home. But the woman with the issue of blood, unknown to everybody, was going to interrupt him. Jesus had agreed, and they were on the journey. But unknown to everybody, unknown to Jesus, unknown to Jairus, there was a woman also who needed Jesus. And what I want to bring out to you here is that Jairus' walk with Christ was interrupted. For all the right reasons. And I want you to understand that in our walk with him, you will be interrupted. A lot of situations, a lot of life issues are going to interrupt your walk with God. So many things are going to come your way. And I, if I allow you to talk to me, you'll be able to give me a mountain of situations and issues that have interrupted your walk with God. Amen. And when that happens, what I need you to do is to behave like Jairus. If you want to see his power and his glory, Jairus did not complain. Jairus did not talk. He knew his daughter was dying. He knew time was not on his side. He knew everything could just go wrong in a twinkle of an eye. But he did not complain. Jesus knew what was at stake. But in the midst of the whole crowd, Jesus stopped and said, who touched me? How important is that in relating to my dead daughter? Sometimes you become so interrupted and you want to fight. You want to pay back. You become so interrupted and you wonder, why should I be talked to in this way? If God loves me, why did this happen to me? Why should my life just come to this abrupt stop? Why? And that is the question we ask all the time. Sometimes we spend years dealing with the whys of our lives. But this morning I have come to appeal to somebody. Can you drop the whys? Because we all have whys, but we have chosen to drop them. Can you drop the why? Because all we want to see is his power and his glory. And if we don't drop the whys, we will not see the power and the glory. Amen. Amen. This woman had issues. This woman, Bible says her life had been wasted by many physicians. You have no idea why your life has been interrupted. Somebody needs him before you do. Somebody is God. That, that is why scripture says in honor, prefer the other. Sometimes you don't know why the situation occurred. But it, it, he does not need your permission. There is somebody who has also started a journey towards him. Because the person knows that Jesus is in town. And that person has taken her whole life. And the Bible says she was so feeble. And I wonder how she was able to maneuver through the crowd. Yet she had to push. There is somebody who has been pushing because you got it right with God. 
Because I, I believe that this woman would not have been able to touch Jesus had Jairus not moved Jesus from where he was. Beloved, your faith has moved Jesus. Your belief has moved Jesus. But listen, somebody needs him because you have just moved him. So that which you have started is the reason for somebody's answered prayer. So if it will take a tragedy for God to stop it, he will stop it. If you take joy, he will use joy to stop it. Listen, he is God. You see negative and you see positive. God does not see as you see. He is not a man. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. So when you see positive, it doesn't mean to God it's positive. No. When you see negative, it doesn't mean that to God it is negative. Because he can use anything. He can use an unbeliever. You can label him and keep the label on him as an unbeliever, but he will use him. Amen. Amen. He can use the bad experience. You would say it's a bad experience. Your, the core of your friendships would say is this is a bad experience, but God sees no bad in it. Because he sees a situation that he can use to his advantage. That interruption was not about Jairus. Can I tell you something? If you want to see his power and his glory, stop personalizing your experiences and holding people to heart and holding people hostage. Because it was not even about Jairus. It was about the woman with the issue of blood and Jesus. And Jairus had nothing to do with it. So Jesus said, somebody touched me. And Peter said, what do you mean? There's a crowd here that everybody is touching you. What do you mean somebody touched me? He said, when Jairus called me, I had so much power. But that power has just gone. I lost the power. Jairus, I'm carrying this power for your sake. But somebody has taken it away. What will you do if your power is lost to somebody else? Amen. Amen. So Jesus stood. And everybody was confused and wondering, what is happening here? And then the woman showed up. said, I did. I did. Jesus, this is my situation. I set off because when I saw you move, I knew Pastor Jairus, his faith had brought you into close proximity. I can now touch you. Can you make your faith bring him into close proximity so somebody can experience his power? I've come to challenge you. That allow your faith to bring Jesus to a close proximity. So your cousin can touch him. So your uncle can touch him. So your mother can touch him. So your brother can touch him. Because the power he is carrying is not for you. He knows what he would do with your situation. But can you allow your personal relationship with him to draw him? To somebody. So somebody's need can be fulfilled. Can you become selfless? Hallelujah. Is somebody with me? Is somebody being blessed? So Bible says, whilst they stood there and Jesus was having this interaction with the woman. Then somebody from Jairus' house came and got there. And if you read the scripture, it sounded harsh to me. Because from the culture I come from, if somebody, if you are announcing the death of somebody, you don't just go and 
say it in a crowd for the first time. Are you getting me? In my culture, Jairus would have been called outside. And I believe in your culture is the same. And probably in your culture is even better. They'll make a cup of tea for Jairus. <laughs> They will make sure they give Jairus a cup of tea just to make sure that he's calm and he can take the shock. But let's read what happened just for you to hear what happened. Verse, verse 49. It says, while he was speaking, a man from the house of the director of the synagogue came. And said to Jairus, your daughter is dead. Just like that. And it was loud because Jesus heard it. He said, your daughter is dead. Do not worry and trouble the teacher any further. Was Jairus troubling him? Was Jairus wearing him out? But look at how harsh that was. I mean... Stop worrying him. Don't worry him. He's your daughter, Jairus. Your daughter is dead. Leave him. Let's go. We have a funeral to think about now. We have burial to think about now. The, the whole story has changed. Jairus, this delay that Jesus caused has brought a whole change in plan. So leave him. We have been waiting for you. We knew that you are a faithful pastor. We knew that you are one that he enlightens. How come you came into contact with the light and you took a walk with him and he stopped? For no reason, he stopped and decided to delay you when he knew that you were time bound. And now your daughter is dead. Leave him. Let's go. We can't do anything with this pastor anymore. He's not the only anointed pastor in town. Leave him. Let's go. Jairus. But listen. Jairus still did not react. Beloved, if we can see his power and his glory, let's breathe our mouth. Amen. Let's not complain. Let's not talk where we don't even understand. Amen. Jairus was still do what? He was still quiet. And Bible says that when Jesus heard it, he responded. Beloved, if you can hold your heart in your walk with him, he would always speak for you. Sometimes, sometimes we, 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 we think that we are feeling the thing better and we can speak better. So we want to talk. But hey, hold it. Amen. Sometimes we feel we are so justified and we can fight. But listen, the battle is not yours, saith the Lord. Amen. God will always take a stand for you. Is somebody with me? Yes. Am I making sense to you? Yes. So Bible says, whilst... Verse 50, but Jesus, on hearing this, answered him, do not be seized with alarm or struck with fear. Simply believe in me as able to do this. Jairus, everything has just changed. But just believe that I am able to do this. In other words, he was telling Jairus that, listen, I carry enough power to do that which concerns you as well. I've come to tell somebody that he carries enough power to do it for you. All you need to do is to believe. He says, Jairus, just believe. Believe. Amen. Amen. It says, do not fear, King James, I, I guess, ESV. It says, do not fear, only believe she will be well. 
How can she? They say she is dead. Amen. It says only believe. I've come to tell somebody that it does not matter whatever results you are saddled with. Only if you can believe, it will be well. You, we cannot talk about the power and the glory and throw our belief away. Amen. It says only believe. If you can believe, Jairus. If you can believe, I've been on this walk with you. It's been personal. Though we, there is a crowd of multitude around us, but it's been a personal walk. Only believe. They saw you when you were on the floor begging me. And they saw you when I started the walk with you. And they are hearing you when your testimony came up. And they say, your daughter now is dead. Jairus, the situation... The circumstances does not necessitate believing in me. But can I ask you for one thing, Jairus? Believe. Beloved, he knows that it is difficult. He knows that sometimes you don't even know how you can get through one door to the other. Because everything pretty much quickly changed for Jairus. Once upon a time, that's why I said the first part of his journey was that he had a very clear mind that he was on a walk with Jesus to his home for his daughter to be ministered unto. A lot of times our journeys and our walk starts with him and we have clarity, we believe, we confess, we do everything. And I mean, you meet believers that they confess anything at all they can confess. I am the head and not the tail. I mean, there's a, there's a praise song. Yeah, uh -huh. and we believe all that, and we, 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 we rejoice. That part of the journey is cool, but let me tell you, your journey with him, it changes. It changes, and if you, if you are not taught the right gospel, you will give up when you should be believing. And if you want to see the power and the glory, it is your belief system that changes the dynamics. This is what opens you up to his power and his glory. So Jairus was now going to continue the work with him, but it was going to be a difficult one. Because now Jesus, after that, was walking towards Jairus' home. Whatever he was going to do now, nobody knew. That is not what Jairus contracted him to come and do. So now, the unknown is what Jairus had stepped into. And Jairus was now walking towards a dead daughter. A funeral awaiting him. So the journey had now changed. And that is how our walk with him changes face. When it changes, it does not mean that God does not love you. Sometimes you feel it. Sometimes you believe it with all your heart that God is against me. Amen. A few years ago, I believed with all my heart that God had come up against me. Amen. Because it's a different thing when you know that you are walking to a dead daughter. Everything you have on your mind it's not, no longer life. It's death. You smell death. And what makes it more, more difficult is that you have a partner on the journey who had seen the dead daughter and had come to fetch you and had come to tell you that don't worry the master anymore. So you have somebody alongside that walk with Christ now that sees nothing but death because they have known it. They came to meet you at that point. Be careful the company you keep. Be careful. Because it may be the fact of the matter, but it's not the truth. They may have the fact of the matter that, yes, Jairus' daughter is dead. But, beloved, when we are talking about his power and his glory, 
There are some friends you need to cut them out. There are some places you don't need to go anymore. Because there was somebody in that crowd that saw the dead daughter. That saw Jairus with Christ. And came and separated that conversation. Until that point, Jairus had not spoken. Neither to Christ nor him. And Jesus said, only believe. It will change. And now everything about the walk with Christ changed. I don't know how Jairus did it. But Jairus was walking towards a dead daughter. He was walking towards a house that there was a funeral. And he knew in himself as a pastor that this is what I was preventing. And Jesus was walking with him. And just told him, believe, without giving him any clues. Beloved, he will not always reveal everything to you. But can I tell you, locked in your confusion is his power and his glory. Locked in your misunderstanding is his power and his glory. Locked in the unknown areas of your life is his power and his glory. Locked in the fight is his power and his glory. Locked in your hatred is his power and his glory. Can you release it by believing in him? Only believe. So Jairus, Jair, can I tell you another thing? Jairus was overstretched. Sometimes we feel so stretched and we don't even understand. But let me tell you, he will stretch you. He will stretch you. He will stretch your finances. He will stretch your marriage. He will stretch your relationships. He will stretch you. He will take you to the ends of the rope. Amen. You will come to your wit's end. But locked in all those experiences is his power and his glory. Amen. Amen. Is somebody with me? Yes. So, it got, listen, it gets to a point, he's the only one who knows what he's capable of doing. Sometimes we want to play God. But beloved, you can play God however you want. With your children, with your husband, with your wife, with whoever. But listen, it gets to a point God shuts you out. Because the glory, the power and the glory belongs to him. And his glory he shares with no man. So it was necessary that he would use the tragedy of the death of his daughter to shut Jairus out. Let me tell you. For some of us, he may not use tragedy. He will use the victory of the situation. But he will make sure that he will shut you out. Because the power and the glory belongs to him. It does not belong to anybody. And he does not share it with anybody. Amen. Amen. So Bible said they walked and got to his home. And when they got to his home, everybody greeted him and said, your daughter is dead. And Jesus got there, and I believe there were people who were looking at Jesus. And the and, and Bible says that they mocked at him. They wondered, what is he here to do? I mean, look at this pastor, this new guy in town, jumping everywhere, saying anything to us at will. And we don't even know why Jairus went for him. He got delayed, and look at what happened. He's not even getting his testimony like the centurion. And everything, but you see, everything that people can label you with is what he has used to lock you out. So that his power and his glory will be revealed. Because when it is revealed, it must be authentic. When it is revealed, the Bible says God does it that no man can add to it. Neither can any man take out of it. Beloved, he is God all by himself. He doesn't need your help. Sometimes we treat God as if God cannot handle that situation. Can I tell you something? He's more than who you think. 
Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I declare that this is the season of somebody's morning. I declare that somebody is rising to a new place in him. Hallelujah. Somebody is coming to that place that God has destined. It says, oh, taste and see that God is good. Somebody is beginning to receive a new taste. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So everybody was just looking on. And I tell you, if you ever went to a funeral like I know, there will be gossipers. There are people who will be saying and interpreting things. People believe they know the story. They know the situation. They know everything that is happening. And so many things were flying over. But when Jesus got there, he took, let's read. I asked you to count. And when he came to the house, he permitted no one to enter with him except Peter and John and James and the girl's father and mother. How many people? Including Jesus. Now let me tell you something. As the Lord was telling me in my meditation, when he got there, he allowed five people to go in. Five is the number of grace. Beloved, I don't care what you are dealing with. If you can allow the grace of God to take over it, the perfection of God will be seen. A lot of times, we don't bring ourselves to that point to allow the grace we speak about to be evident in the reality. We just talk. But if you are dealing with his power and his glory, allow grace to do its work. A lot of times we try to preempt the work of grace. Amen. There was a daughter dead. But what Jesus allowed through the door to the dead situation was grace. It says, by grace are ye saved, not of works that any man should boast. When he told Jairus in the journey that only believe, he was telling Jairus that connect, there is a grace on my life. And you can't see it. But as we get to your home, I'll demonstrate it for you. Beloved, if you can allow him in your walk with him, he will demonstrate his grace to that situation. He will demonstrate his grace to your finances. He will demonstrate his grace to everything around you. It does not matter what people are saying. Allow him so he will demonstrate his grace. Because when he demonstrates his grace, listen, grace went through that door and life came out. Yes. Amen. Amen. Grace went through that door, but life came out. If grace can enter into your home from today, life will come out of your home. If grace can enter into your business, life will come out. What goes in matters because the world is waiting for what will come out. A lot of times we are mindful of what we want to show and we don't care about what goes in. But if you are talking about the manifestations of his, great, his, his, his um, power and glory, then it matters what is going into your life. It matters who is speaking into your life. It matters what you are taking in. If you can sit through a chemical engineering course and allow everything to go into you, you will come out as a chemical engineer. 
if you can sit through whatever you can allow in, it tells what is coming out. He ushered five people in and shut the door. He was the sixth person. Six is the number of man. And when the little girl arose, seven. Seven is perfection. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Can I ask you what is behind your closed door? Because what came out that day was life that depicted his power and his glory. And everybody that was out there, when the door opened, and he said, look for food for the little girl to eat, everybody was shocked. They couldn't believe it. I wonder what happened to the man that took the news to Jairus. I wonder the people who saw Jesus and started mocking them. Beloved, it does not matter what is happening. Have you been saved by grace? Allow grace to have its full cause in your life. Will you bow down your heads with me? And I want you to pray for yourself. I don't know what you got out of this message. But I want you to pray for yourself. The power and the glory. Ask God to come through for you. What is going in? What have you allowed in? A lot of us have allowed gossip in. A lot of us have allowed bad reports. It says, whose report will you believe? A lot of us have allowed, I don't know what the doctors are telling you about your health. What have you allowed in? It says, by grace are ye saved. Not of works that any man should boast. Beloved, the grace of God works the power and the glory of God in you. Oh, Jesus, help your people. In the name of Jesus, have your way, Lord. And glorify Jesus. Lord, I thank you. I bless you for this moment. As I commit this congregation into your hands. That have your way. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I agree with you. If you can just come. I'm ready to agree with you. That the Lord. Soul Clinic, Wigan, 2019, at Grace Fountain Church, life transforming, destiny shaping, the power.